So now the only thing we're missing is our arrows. And there's actually a couple different ways to do that. Uh, we'll do it the ZBrush way first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to Append. And you can append anything. Uh, you can use a cone, which is kind of an arrow shape. You can actually use an actual arrow. So we'll go ahead and append an arrow. Um, if you wanted to, you can actually go to BI Brush Insert Body Parts. And you can hit M. Or you can go up here and you can kind of scroll around. You can grab a hand. And if you want to like pose a hand and have it point, let's go ahead and select a white color here. You can split this off and have like fingers pointing in which direction you want. Uh, but for now, we'll just use an arrow. So we've appended an arrow here. So we'll go ahead and select that subtool here. And let's hit, uh, it doesn't really matter, W, E, or R. Which we have the gizmo selected. Now we do have uh, move multiple uh, turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that off so we can just scoot this uh, arrow around. So we'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit and move it over here. And we'll kind of match the other uh, cam views that are built in with ZBrush. So if I want to make a down arrow, I can hold down Control and just pull an arrow out of here and then hold down shift and we'll go ahead and snap this to uh, straight down while we're rotating in this view here and then we'll just move this so we're down and then again control drag out a copy and then hold down shift and we'll rotate this and we'll put that here I suppose or you know what let's put it here and make sure we're snapped to the front here I'm gonna pull this out front so now we get kind of a nice clean uh, look here. So if I hold down control and drag, that'll unmask all my objects. So now I've got three arrows kind of stacked on top of each other. Now what I want to do is I want to fill in these arrows with red, green, and blue. So when I go over here and click them, because again, it's clicking the pixels that are red and green and blue that's causing ZBrush to go, oh, you want the left view and the right view and the front view. So again, these can be any shape, they can be anywhere on the model, they can be in any location, but they do need to be pure red, green, and blue. If you need to know which direction they're pointing in, you can just click Next, and you'll see any view would be red, green, and blue. You can also go into Photoshop, and you can open up 2020's startup cam view, and we'll just open up Earthquake here, and you're going to see red's going to be your x-axis, z is going to be your blue axis, and y is going to be your green axis, which makes sense because, again, if we turn on our floor, you're going to know blue is z forward, red is the x-axis, green, and if you turn on your floor with x, y, and z turned on, you're going to see, again, Green is Y, blue is Z, X is red. So a lot of different ways to remind yourself of what colors these should be. Now, I need to fill these with a color. So again, I'm going to have RGB selected, and I'm going to go over here to red. Now, I don't know that this is pure red. It's pretty red, but in order to make sure it's pure red, I'm going to take this color menu and just dock it over here. And now I have numerical values. So I'm going to take this, it says 225R. I'm going to make it 255, green, no green, no blue. Now I know this is pure red. So now I need to fill in my x-axis arrow with red. So let's go ahead and go out of polyframe. Uh, right now, it's just inheriting whatever color I have selected. If I go through here, um, since I haven't filled these verts with a color yet, it's just gonna pick up whatever color I have. So again, 255, 0, 0. And since these are all the same poly group, I can't just control shift click one. I can go down here to poly groups, auto groups, and now they're all different poly groups, so I can isolate them like that. Or like we did before, control shift drag a little piece of it, control shift A, and now you can just go over here to color, fill object, turn off polyframe so you can see, and then control shift tap, and you'll see this is filled with red. So we'll go ahead and grab pure blue, again 0, 0, 0255, we'll isolate this front one, our z-axis, color, fill object, and then finally this green one here, 0, 255, 0, isolate, fill, and there we go. And if I want to move this green arrow around, I can just uh, I can hit W, I can control tap the green arrow, and then that'll just mask just that poly group there, and then control drag to unmask everything. Now, I can't just capture this for two reasons. Number one, if I go over here to preferences, cam view, make cam view, you're going to see as I'm moving this around, the arrows are going all over the place, and I can kind of touch some of the blue parts and some of the green parts, uh, but not all of it. You know, like the red and the blue just aren't working, and I can barely see it. So, the reason that's not working is I don't I don't want these arrows to change. If I go to any of these cam views, you're going to see these arrows never change. They're always in the upper right-hand corner. They never change positions. And they're always pointing in the same direction. So I don't want to capture my arrows. Number two, it's not pure red, pure blue, and pure green. You're going to see these are all just one value. So if I go here and I click over my information, or you go to Window, Turn on Info, and I just kind of go over these, you're going to see this is, well, it's, it's 254.00, but pretty dang close. 
but you can see these are all pure green, pure blue, and pure red. So we need to do the same thing in ZBrush. Now we filled the verts with those colors, but since it's picking up shading information, uh, it's knocking those values off. So how do I fix that? If I go to my basic material and I choose a flat color, now I'm getting just the pure pixel values of my arrows. But I've also lost the shading information on my musculature, which is what I don't want because I haven't filled in the materials on these verts yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my body. I'm gonna to go to my material. I'm gonna go back to that basic material we were using. I'm gonna choose M and then go to color fill object. And now my material's filled. So when I go back to these arrows and I choose a flat color, these will stay the same. And now I've got a flat color for my arrows. Now, again, I don't want these arrows to be captured with my object. And I kind of want them positioned within the bounding box of my overall object. You'll notice a lot of the other subtools that just th keeps things nice and consistent. So here's the cool thing. Because we did an, or a unify on my object, if I go over here to append a cube, and let's go ahead and choose a white color again, and we'll turn on transparency, and we'll turn off ghost, and we'll select our head here. You're going to see our head fits perfectly within this bounding box because unify essentially what that does is take your object and fit it fit its bounding box perfectly within a zbrush cube so if i want i can take my arrows here and i'm gonna hold down alt and i'm gonna reset this trans uh this move so i can like move these like here i can just grab the camera move i can move them uh, within the bounding box here i'll go ahead and turn that off and let's go to uh, unmatched mesh center i'm going to scale this down a little bit we'll keep that cube turned on So it's up in the corner, but it's not really interfering too much with my uh, my body here. All right, so I'm gonna hit Q to go back into draw mode. So now, and we'll turn off transparent. So now I have my arrow sitting here and my head sitting here. Now I wanna capture my head, but I don't wanna capture the 3D model of the arrow. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna turn off everything but my arrows. I'm gonna hit Shift S, and that's gonna stay, save a uh, snapshot. In fact, if I move this around and I do Shift S, you can just capture snapshots of your model all over. In fact, if you have everything showing and you do Shift S, it's gonna capture snapshots all over the place. It's actually good for reference too, if you ever wanna like, you know, have on your canvas some reference of an object, you can just do Shift S all around. Actually, let's hit Control N. And let's say, okay, I want this here, and I want a side view, and I want a three-quarter view. And then I want to take my, my sphere, and we'll go back to, say, basic material, or startup material, and we can go through here. We can kind of just start. Let's go back to Z-Ad. And now I can start sculpting with that reference up there on my canvas. But anyway, we'll go back to our uh, view here. We'll hit Control N to clear our canvas. And we'll go back to our flat color so our arrows are correct. And again, just with the arrows showing, we're going to do Shift S to snapshot that to our canvas. If you want to turn this eyeball off, you can turn the eyeball off. You can also just, if it's on, you can touch the nameplate. That'll turn it off. And now we can just select our model here. So with this snapshot to our canvas and our model visible, we can go over here and we can say, make cam view. And now it's going to capture these arrows with my object here. So I can hit Control N to clear my canvas. And now as I rotate this around, you're gonna see my cam view now has arrows and I can go through here and now it's pure red, pure blue, and pure green. Everything's working great. In fact, I can go over here, I can say export. We can make another new one. Maybe a crochet bus with arrows. Oops, we've got one thing, document, background, pure black. Shift S, cam view, make cam view, control N to clear our canvas. Now we can go in here and we can say export the crochet bus with arrows. Perfect. So now we got a transparent background here with arrows.